Greetings guys, welcome to the Time Bomb channel featuring the dulcet tones of your host, the Bombardier. So my intention for this vid uh, was to do a state of the collection to essentially catalogue where I'm at um, and the watches that I have, um, which of those are winning some sort of wrist time and uh, any other feedback that, that was kind of useful. Um, but essentially I had a change of mind, uh, let me explain why. So Titan Watches um, out of India came up on a recommendation on uh, Instagrammer. So I, I had a quick look at their range. I didn't find anything really of interest. I was perplexed by their pricing structure as they're super cheap. Um, maybe I thought, yeah, I might look into them at a later date and nothing of interest now. Um, I then followed that up and I was looking at um, other watches that are produced in India, obviously with uh, HMT. Uh, being one of the, the oldest ones and uh, discontinued now. And I came across the Bangalore uh, watch company and I was really quite taken by their designs, uh, specifically this one, absolute stunner. Um, but they're a little bit uh, above my budget threshold, so I just subscribed to their uh, newsletter. I'll put a link to uh, Bangalore watch company below. Uh, let me know if you like them or not. And of course, just as a quick reminder, I have no ties uh, to them whatsoever. I was just hunting around on the interweb when I stumbled across them. Uh, it would be great to review one of them one day um, if they do arrive here in UK stores. Um, so anyway, the first email uh, newsletter from Bangalore Watch Company that came through was this one. So as you can see, I'll just read through it. So it's a message from Bangalore Watch Company. Uh, Duncan, your watch is entirely unnecessary. It offers no utility besides telling you what time it is, just as well as your microwave clock. And yet you cherish it because of the personal connection you have with it. If you're like most people, you bought your first nice watch to remind yourself of that first paycheck, anniversary, promotion, um, etc., etc. The popular worldview of India is that of elephants, snake charmers, exotic gods and oriental motives. Ours, on the other hand, is of space exploration, advanced computing and our women flying fighter planes. We are founded in Bangalore, India's watchmaking ground zero, and we wanted to create world-class works with them, etc, etc, etc. I won't go through the whole detail. But anyway, um, <laughs> I absolutely love this. Um, what a brilliantly succinct and accurate summary. And it got thinking about my unnecessary watch obsession, watch unnecessary watch collection. And that led me to the change in the video today. Maybe I should title this video um, instead of a state of the collection. I should call it state of mind or unnecessary collection or unnecessary mind. Um, yeah, you get the drift. So yeah, um, <laughs> simple conclusion, my watch collection is entirely unnecessary. I only truly need uh, one watch, one watch to rule them all. Boom, boom. But that decision as to which has frustrated me for years now, and I've bought and sold uh, more watches than I can remember. So I bought my uh, 10 slot watch box uh, over a year ago with a two year plan with clear goals and models in mind. Less than a year later, and it's full. Um, so just uh, for uh, sake of argument, do a quick run through here of what we've actually got in the box. Okay, so just a very quick run through of what we have um, here on the right hand side. Uh, we have my failed, uh, <laughs> slightly incompleted uh, Vostok mod, um, the, the, the hands. I, I, I had real issues putting the hands back on. I think the little presser that I had uh, didn't work properly, completely knackered them up. Um, so I'm going to need to take it to a watch shop to get the new set of hands and perhaps help me put that one back together. Um, old Kynesel. Um This is a, an, an heirloom apparently handed down through uh, some uh, the Teutonic side of my family. Um, I don't know very much indeed about the watch. It is actually still working. Uh, second hand, a uh, small second hand there is a sort of corroded over history um doesn't work anymore maybe the same guy that fixes the boss stock can help me out with that one um of course the old classic uh 5610 um waiting for his new uh, new set of clothes um top left corner so we've got an old citizen um this is actually one of uh yeah old original ones it must be about 15 years old now still ticking along perfectly 
G-Shock, 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 uh, GBX uh, 100, um, Men in Rusty Black, uh, Old Frog, again, that's uh, coming up to 10 years old now, um, the omnipresent um, absolute monster that, of course, is uh, the Ecozilla. Um, a little gift from the family uh, a couple of Christmases ago. This is uh, Shaw Projects, uh, so microbrand. Pop that out of there, sorry. You can see it a little better. Microbrand out of the UK, uh, selling sort of you know leisure leisure watches. Um, used to wear this on a, uh, an, on a Milanese, just swapped it out onto the leather just to give it a, a new lease of life. Um, bottom right corner, of course, uh, the, uh, the Kuraburi. I mean, just, yeah, the Kraken. Um, stunning, stunning, stunning timepiece in every shape and form. Um, yeah, Orient, um, uh, speak English, uh, Orient uh, Bambino, uh, small seconds. Uh, champagne dial I mean absolutely stunning and yeah a go-to stalwart for uh, work shirts um, yep no, no, no brainer for that and then of course sitting next to that we have our um, Citizen Pro Master Tough again did a, view, a review on this it's, it's, it's rapidly becoming my uh, my go-to watch it's low profile sits under your hoodie sits under a shirt um, as solid as you come. I mean, yeah, absolutely stunning. Help if we had it the right way around. Let's try it. <laughs> Let's do it at twelve o'clock at the top, please. Um, then next to it again, yeah, the uh, another old, old classic. Uh, been been with me a few quite a long time now. This is of course the Pingo, uh, another citizen diver. Um, yeah, um, I have to uh, thank my older brother uh, for for forcing me to buy this one. He had this watch when it first came out. And I was a little kid, saw him wearing this and uh, fell in love with it. I was like, dude, i got to get one of those. And so eventually I did. <laughs> and then lastly, in the corner, um, of course, the uh, the Seiko. I did a review on him the, the other day. Uh, dressy, smart, swanky, very priced, very, very expensive. And also really quite nice. Yeah. Okay, so there's a uh, a quick summary, as I say, of, of that was the state of the collection. I wanted to go into more detail about each one, etc., but then, yeah, kind of got me thinking about this unnecessary aspect, and so hence we're going off on a tangent here. So, I suppose the question for me is, what's next? Is it another 10-slot box? Um, where does it stop? Um, if I get another 10, 10 watches, is that going to stop me actually buying any more? Um, if you check out uh, the relative time channel uh, here on here on the tube, uh, gentleman there, his reviews are excellent, really honest, very insightful, and he recently did a study of the collection video, and in that video he, he he's clocked up thirty eight watches from thirty seven different brands. Yeah. Admittedly, he has over 20,000 subscribers to his channel, so he's probably getting a little financial help to fund his collection. But that is a serious rabbit hole that he's fallen into. And yeah, for me, that's then four watch boxes. At what point do we then perhaps start considering a few sessions on a couch in some downtown office uh, to get some help uh, with our interest in watches? Kudos, I think, to the one watch owner. It is the one and only that you ever buy. You'd save bucket loads of cash, bucket loads of anxiety, and surely the sense of satisfaction with that one watch would last forever, right? Okay, so the whole point of a collection um, is about what you want, right? Um, all of these watches in here are watches that I want. Um, they have function, they have purpose, I use them regularly, I, alter I alternate, change out, maybe wear two, three watches in the same day, depending on what I'm doing, you know, doing some work around the house, okay, yeah, right, got, got, got my tough, I got my, my, my old frog, uh, I can beat it up and do anything till I want to it, and nothing ever is going to harm it. Buying watches shouldn't be about recommendation, shouldn't be about listening to other people or buying watches because other people tell you that they're the best watch in the world. 
maybe in that sense okay my my channel here is somewhat redundant i should also stop uh, making recommendations and of course where do we find all of these recommendations you look at all the watches here it's pretty you know i say 80 percent of them there's, there's reviews online hundreds of reviews online there are watch channels offering advice on the best the best three um watch collection for 500 bucks the best two watch collection for 1500 pounds the best this the worst that ad infinitum question are we watching you uh, all of these watch reviews on youtube is that the reason that's that, that's pushing us to buy more is it watch porn take the uh take the g-shock squares as i say this humble beastie uh has, has been with me for a while and uh this is why he's going to be getting a new suit of clothes pretty soon there are literally hundreds of videos on the on, on the g-shock square family the, the, the 5600 the 5610 and all their variations and they've got huge huge viewing stats um i saw one uh review the 60 the the 5610 the other day and it had 326 27000 views and counting yeah let that one sink in 327000 people around the world watching thinking to themselves about this semi redundant time telling device sweating fretting while their fingers twitch over the purchase button of a watch that cost me on amazon 83 pounds now i don't know about you guys but that to me uh, is quite a bizarre phenomena <laughs> that i'm really not sure i'm not aware of it occurring with any other products do you guys know of any other products that attract the same levels of review frenzy I remember in the past I watched um, motorbike reviews uh, before making a purchase, but yeah, that was because there was new models coming out and I'd not had the chance to test ride them, etc. Um, but I've never watched reviews on anything else that I've bought, a pair of trainers, a phone, a laptop, computer games, whatever. The power of the peer review has exploded beyond reason. Chums uh, of mine with similar issues, uh, watch issues, have postulated that the lockdown uh, that we're currently experiencing is contributing to this viewing frenzy. <laughs> maybe they're right. But there is a serious, uh, and I think maybe why is there, there's a serious lack of the normal stimuli being replaced by other stimuli. The hunt for savings, driving the, uh, buying, uh, the buying compulsion, never buying a watch for its RRP, MRP, getting the hottest ever timepiece until... The next one comes out. Do you think, maybe, guys, that we can get beer goggles over watches? I fawn over this one. I know one of my nephews keeps trying to tell me he wants to buy this one off me. Um, yeah, beer goggles, perhaps? Yeah. After all, you can end up having too many watches, and then you'll end up wearing a watch on each wrist. <laughs> Is that the next step? Surely not. I mean, if I'm wearing a watch on both both wrists, I'm really externalizing my mental illness here, right? I don't buy for external gratification. It never motivates me uh, thinking what others will think of me. I think perfect proof of that. If I'm going down to uh, Lidl and I'm wearing uh, my Zilla or I'm wearing my frog, frankly, who gives a crap, right? Nobody sees it. Fewer people will ever know what it is. <laughs> Quite a bizarre and introverted little hobby, this one, isn't it? It's all about self and maybe the once or two people, one or two people in the world that you'll meet somewhere who A, recognize, B, are interested. So tell me, guys, um, what do you YouTubers think about this phenomena? Where are you guys in your uh, horological psychosis? What are your areas of interest? Are you a dive watch freak, a little bit like me? Are you a vintage connoisseur? Have you been connoisseur? Are you a high-end chaser? Are you into the new wave of Chinese homage watches? Is it time for us to be cutting the red or the black wire on watches in general? Just buy one. Stick with it. End of subject. All right, guys. To wrap up, there's the conclusion. I think I'll finish there. Just a quick ramble about uh, watch psychosis and how unnecessary the whole thing is. Um, and as always, this is your host, the Bombardier, signing off. Cheers, guys. <laughs>